history what does history teaches us about past pandemic let's look back in 1918 of the spanish flu let's look at the forgotten history on the spanish flu of the 1980 and how it was successfully treated by a group of persons in Butter Creek. It was called the Butter Creek Sanitarium in Michigan by a group of persons who called themselves Elk Reformers who were from the Seventh-day Adventist Church. They used a few methods that proved to be very successful such as open air exercises, plenty of water, fresh fruits made in juice and was at Edinburgh fresh, and a vegan diet, and especially their temperance movement that they highlighted in terms of temperance, what they mean when they said temperance, they mean to abstain from that which is harmful, such as alcohol, etc., junk food, etc., etc., and to eat that which is good sparingly. It works and was successful 100% of the time with all the patients who were administered to as patients at the Butter Creek Sanitarium. This is hardly talked about because these people were mocked as fanatics in the public and media before. They were called butter freaks because of the many views that they held. They were considered and they also promoted many views that the public considered extreme or being fanatical because they were not like ordinary persons. Many of them were anti-vaxxers. They preach a unique message called Three Angels Message, the seventh day Sabbath to be kept on Saturday, the sanctuary message of Daniel 8, which was complemented with a help message they claimed to be a preparation message to prepare their minds to be clear so that God can speak and communicate his truth to them. They believe that the physical impacts the spiritual. If these people got it right in a devastating and deadly pandemic, could they be right again during these times of COVID panacea crisis? As one of their zealous and faithful adherents put it, they call themselves present truth believers. Let's interview and let's see what is their belief and their recommendation for this COVID crisis. They recommend the same treatment and follows the same health message today as their predecessor. And their biblical views is worth noting in these times of crisis. This COVID inoculation is one option presented, but one doctor says this pandemic is a war and all guns and weapons should be considered to use in this battle. They believe the Bible prophecy of this crisis. They believe that the Bible prophecy speaks of this crisis. As I report the following, they claim based on Malachi 4, 1-6, before the second coming of Christ, 
the days of Elijah will be like now. And the prophecy of the Elijah message and conditions will be the same as today. They presented odd facts from the Bible to support their point in showing all in Elijah's time in 1 Kings 17 and chapter 18. How it shows that Baal worship or nature worship, the chief god of nature being sun worship, was closely linked with sodomy, homosexuality, according to 2 Kings 23 verses 5 and 7. It was linked and it was closely connected with the apostasy that was going on in the time of King Ahab amongst God's professed people. Just bear with me with my reporting. You will see how they connect this and how it relates to the pandemic that we're experiencing now. These present truth believers, as they call themselves, they believe based on all the evidences and descriptions the Bible give, the papacy fit the bill of the Antichrist. As all reformers of the Protestant Reformation from the 5th century coming down believe that the papacy is the Antichrist that is described in Daniel chapter 7 and Daniel chapter 8 and 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. I continue. They claim the papacy represents the Jezebel of Ahab days. And Jezebel was the wife of King Ahab, who brought God's professed church to the lowest spiritual condition, as Jezebel caused King Ahab to did evil and sold himself in doing evil as no other kings of Israel had did before. 1 Kings 21 verse 25 And the nation of Israel went into its deepest apostasy. They believed these present truth believers just as all before the public arrival of Christ or just before Christ appeared on the scene in his public ministry, John the Baptist came as a representative of Elijah to prepare for Christ's public ministry. And Mrs. Herodes hated the message of John the Baptist and seek to kill John who was represented as the Elijah of that time, according to Matthew 17, verse 10 to 13. They viewed the times of John of they viewed the time of John as now. Corrupt church leaders being financed and influenced by the state. King Herod financed the temper in the days just before the coming of Christ. And the state was financing the church. And the church and state was closely linked. But John the Baptist, in the days of Jesus when he was here on earth, the Bible stated that King Herod at a feast and he invited a lot of guests and dignitaries and Herodas daughter danced at the request of King Herod but King Herod promised her to give her any thing that she would wish or desire and her mother told her to ask King Herod for the head of John the Baptist. 
And so it says that John was killed because of the hatred of Mrs. Herodes. Because John had earlier rebuked their adulterous relationship and she took it as an offense. So, so as it was in the days of the second Elijah, which is John, John the Baptist, wherein church and state came together, the present truth believers, they believe that Herodes is represented as the papacy, who will come and mix or join together with the church, state being mixed together with the church statecraft and churchcraft. They strengthen their point as to why we are living in the last days in appealing to Jesus' message to the disciples. Jesus' message to the disciples' question when they asked Jesus a three-part question as to what shall be the signs of his coming of the end of the world and when Jerusalem was to be destroyed. Jesus responded to this three-part question by telling them one of his signs of his second coming in Matthew 24. The first advice Jesus gave was to take heed against being deceived because deception will be rampant as the Apostle Paul stated in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through to 13, that evil men and seducers will be a lot and successful in deceiving many. The last days will be like now, as it stated, crimes, uncontrolled passions, no love, homosexuality. People can't keep a promise or commitment boastful in sin, proud in sin, loving evil, and hate good. Also it says that in the last days that men shall be blasphemers and the present truth believers, they pointed out that today a lot of celebrities, a lot of musicians, a lot of persons, even prime ministers, are calling themselves gods. And a lot of persons believe that they are gods, are God. And it goes to show that we are truly living in the last days as the present truth believers have put it. Because now we have even the Prime Minister of Jamaica referring to himself as Brother God. And according to John chapter 8, that's a blasphemous term for one to be associating themselves, calling themselves a God or gods. And so it is today when government forces the conscience of people they are acting like a god they view jesus description also of the last days as now as luke 17 26 to 30 where jesus was speaking of the last days he says just before his second coming that the world will be like Sodom, filled with homosexuality and a riotous spirit. And so it is, and so it will be, and so even more the last days will be like the times of Elijah, filled with sodomy, false worship, sun worship, being closely connected with homosexuality. 
Jesus also spoke of the time just before he comes will be like the times of Noah when crime was rampant, ungodliness, all sorts of marriages that was being enacted but marriages that were outside of the will of God and marriages that while they were married they were neglecting the spiritual things of life you may be saying what that has to do with COVID-19 why are these present truth believers tying this with COVID-19 let's see now their thesis is in their thesis is in Elijah time there was a spiritual drought which the cause was a physical drought the primary cause of no dew no rain no dew no rain for three and a half years and so they believe that today there is no dew no rain symbolizing the holy spirit will be in the churches of today elijah god's prophet was blamed for the climate crisis then and so today jesus followers will be blamed for the climate crisis of today and so jesus stated in luke 21 verses 9 to 14 and matthew 24 4 to 12 that there will be pestilences diseases and all sorts of natural disasters which we call today climate change jesus says there are signs of his coming but how does the scientific world see it does the scientific world see it as such as signs of jesus coming what will the christian do or will they respond to jesus message versus the scientific community of today because clearly the scientific community will never see these natural disasters that jesus spoke of in matthew 24 4 to 12 and luke 21 9 9 to 14 as signs of jesus coming but they will see it as mere changes in the climate and the cause they will see it as something that is caused naturally by human action but they will not see it as a spiritual matter if the signs of Jesus coming, coming are as bird pangs, what should we do? If the signs are as a result of man rejecting God and Satan bringing these disasters such as climate change, can it be reversed by a drug or a natural solution? How do we view Revelation 12 verse 12, the present truth believers ask. Also another strong claim is their understanding of Revelation 18 1 through to 4, where the papacy the woman represents the false church, as woman in prophecy represents a church. Jeremiah chapter 6 verse 2, Isaiah chapter 4. The papacy which is represented as the woman in Revelation 18, 1 to 4, presidents, prime ministers, were leaders represented as kings, plus the merchants being represented as the businessmen of this world, where the Bible says that the papacy, the president, the businessmen, will drink the false wine of the woman the papacy 
then conspire. So there will be a conspiracy between the papacy, the world leaders, and the business community, it says, to deceive the nations through the pharmacy or drugs. They alluded to the word sorceries in Revelation 18 verse 23 that the Bible says that they will use sorcery when they conspire. The papacy, the presidents or world leaders and the business community will use sorceries to deceive the world. Sorceries in the Greek it means pharmaceutical, a drug. So according to the present truth believers, sorceries, a drug, a medication, pharmacy, is what they will conspire. One of the things that they will use to deceive the nation according to Revelation 18 verse 23. So sorcery in the Greek or in Bible means pharmaceutical, a drug. Verse 24, they said, says that the saints will be killed because they will not be deceived. Only they will understand what is going on, but the wicked will not understand, according to Daniel 12 and verse 10. The question is, or the question should be, why should they trust the world leaders? great men of the earth or the scientific community against their conscience when they have a health message that works and a prophecy that cautions them against the deception and the cause of the crisis that we are now in as they believe in a time of trouble coming soon through a climate crisis which will demand not only a physical solution, but a spiritual one also in bail worship of a national Sunday law when it's enforced by America. So they are saying that when America passes a national Sunday law and forcing people, that then and there the cause will be a the cause will be natural disasters that will lead America and its people to demand a natural solution and also a spiritual solution. So the spiritual solution, according to the present truth believers, will be a national and a worldwide enforced Sunday law. So they are saying that not until it's enforced, then it will not be the mark of the beast. Only when Sunday is enforced as a counterfeit Sabbath to the true Sabbath day, Saturday, the seventh day, then and only then will it be the mark of the beast. They also believe that all the policies of this pandemic and more will be used to restrict freedom of conscience in the fulfillment of Revelation 13. The mark of the beast, which a cashless system will fuel the agenda more as to who can buy or sell, etc. As we see the direction this pandemic is leading to, that it is restricting those who are able to travel, Later on, it seems to buy or to go to the movies, the park, or whatsoever it may be, that freedom of movement and conscience is being restricted. There are many places that persons are not allowed to sing on their choir. They are not allowed to sing from hymnal. They are not allowed to do many things that is considered a religious liberty of conscience or religious freedom. They believe also that anything that contradicts 
leads to confusion, restrict liberties, is for profit, resembles evil principles like those of Revelation 13, leads to depression and fear, anything that is not natural and in secrecy and most of all contradictory to scriptures should be avoided. And so let's examine some of their understanding and explanation as to why they believe that these things should be avoided and they have found all these in this COVID inoculation. The contradictory part is that the signs keep on changing and flip flapping. It leads to confusion in the sense that persons who have been jabbed or receive the job or the inoculation they are told that it won't prevent them from catching the disease but it told but they are told that it will prevent them from being hospitalized it restrict their liberties persons are not able to travel to go about their business a lot of businesses are closed a lot of jobs will never be recovered a lot of evictions are taking place a lot of hunger suicide is on the rise depression is on the rise many persons are not able to worship as freely as they would and many persons business are affected adversely and so it is that it restricts liberties that even business are told when to close and when to open. It's for profit. Because it is reported that one of the vaccine companies in three months have made a profit of 900 million, over 900 million. And so it is that if it wasn't for profit, why they did not share their patent with the other countries? Why is it that if you are so much interested in saving the world, why not share the patent with the other nations so that the other nations can see if maybe they can produce it at a cheaper rate or something? Not because you have received the job free means that there is no cost attached to it. So we see clearly that it's more for profit and not merely for health. Do you trust your government according to what the present truth believers are saying? Do you trust your government? That your government is truly concerned about your health. If they were truly concerned about their, your health. Would they have allowed the tobacco industry to flourish? Would they allow tobacco, cigarettes and all these destroying health substances. Even alcohol. Alcohol to be sold and freely being distributed it goes to show that government is not there for your health what about the resem the resemblance of evil principles remember in revelation 13 it's the only time we see wherein the bible talks about a law that will restrict those who can buy and sell does this COVID-19 crisis and its policies resemble such evil principle of the mark of the beast that will be coming in the future? 
It leads also to depression, they say, because those who have received the job, the job are the most depressed and stressful because they seem to be so much so worried about those who have not been jabbed. So if they were really and truly protected, why would you have to worry about those who are on jab? Those who are not jab. Because the ones who are not jab or who have not received their vax, they are the ones who should be most depressed and worried and concerned. But it seems to be the other way around. The present truth believer, they also believe that anything that is not natural, they don't believe in taking drugs or pharmaceutical medicine. So you won't find a present truth believer taking a Panadol, a multi-symptom or whatsoever it may be. They believe in staying away from all conventional drugs. They believe in staying away from things that are in secrecy. As Jesus said that he has done nothing in secret, he spoke all things openly. Why is it that there is not, they, they said, a open and a clear highlight and promotion as to what is in the vax or the jab? Why is it that no one seems to be sure or the masses of the people seems not to be sure as to what is in this jab but you are told to take it and most of all they said it contradicts the scriptures that previously we have gone through that warns them against a medication a pharmaceutical medicine that will be used to deceive the world also they are saying why the Christians were so willing to bow and make it appear even to the Eden that even the God of the Christian have to bow and cannot deal with this pandemic. So the churches have to be closed and the churches were willing to bow. But I thought no disease could abide in God's presence. So what about those so-called baptism of fire that was going on in all these churches? Were they fake? Or were they for a show or a pretense? Or was it a counterfeit baptism of fire? Why is it that that baptism of fire, COVID seems to be even more powerful than all those services that had consisted of baptism of fire? This is one of the problems that the churches hardly even recommend per or offer a spiritual solution of repentance. The voices are not loud enough from the churches recommending a spiritual solution of fasting of prayer of repentance or calling the world leaders to repentance and showing them the cause. Why is it that Second Chronicles 7 verse 14 is not being highlighted? And why it is that Psalms 91 is not being highlighted by the churches? Why is it so? Have the church lost its salt? Is it that there is but just a few true believers? Is it that the road is really narrow? And that the majority will be on the side of the wrong? And few will find the narrow path? The present truth believers also appeal to the fact that Anything that the world loves, 1 John chapter 2 verse 15, that anything that the world is running after, the Christian should run the opposite way. 
Could it be that all the world that is going after this job is a sign of clear deception? Should the present truth believers still trust in their natural remedies? As they call it, the new start. The new start, it's an acronym. N for nutrients. E for exercise. W for water. S for sunshine. T for temperance. A for fresh air or air. R for rest. And T for trusting in God. The new start. That's the acronym. That's what the Butter Creek Sanitarium in the 1918 used to combat successfully the Spanish flu. And so it is that many of those who were in congested hospital and wasn't exposed to the fresh air, open air, the sunshine, and was being fed a depleted diet depleted of nutrients that they were more sick and uh, there was a lot of debt but those who were at the sanitarium in Battle Creek owned by the Seventh-day Adventist Church they were almost 100% successful in treating all their patients could we learn something from history and the past why was this group of people hardly mentioned was it because they were ashamed to highlight them because they saw them as battle freaks and they were jeered and looked upon with ridicule and as fanatics could we learn something from the past for this present? Can we learn anything? We see today that all sorts of group and persons are promoting receiving the job. Persons of Rastafarian background, persons from the atheist community persons from the churches all walks of life the voice is united but the present truth believers appeal to revelation 17 where it says that they will have one mind the world will have one mind and one voice they see themselves as Revelation 12 verse 17 says that Satan is really right with them. Those who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus. They believe strongly in the message of Revelation 14 verses 6 to 12 called the three angels message. They believe that they are called to proclaim this message universally. Should we consider their view? Should we apply natural remedies? Should it be even considered on the table? Or should it be one size fit all? Everyone take the job. Whether you're young or old, whether you can take it or not, whether it goes against your conscience. Or should it be that all options be considered? that are real and feasible. Should we learn from the Spanish flu of the 1918? Should we learn? They also ask a few questions. But first, before we look at those few questions that they have asked, they have a message for those who have been jabbed. 
Jeremiah 46 verse 11, they says applies to those who have been jabbed, especially those who are Christians. So you can read Jeremiah 46 verse 11. They also says that it shows the Christians who have received the jab their state of being unprepared for the greater crisis to come, the mark of the beast crisis and the seven last plague. They believe that Daniel 2 was the first test, a test of health, that those who passed the, the test of health, the, that health crisis in Daniel 2, are the same one who passed the test of worshiping the image in Daniel chapter 3. So they, be, so they believe, the present truth believers, that those who passed the test of Daniel 2, which is similar to the crisis that we're in our health crisis, they believe it's the same persons that will pass the test of worshiping the image in Daniel. Daniel chapter 3. They ask a few questions. They ask a few questions. They said that if one doesn't take conventional drugs, then why should they take this one? As I've alluded before earlier, and I've explicitly also said that the present truth believers, they believe in only natural remedies, in taking no form of drugs, naturopathy. They said, this job is not even as other jobs, which the same scientists claim prevents one from catching a particular disease. So even though it's called a vax, they are saying that it's not a vax. Because a vax is supposed to protect one from catching the disease that the vax is for. The, the next question they ask, if one has received natural immunity or asymptomatic then hospitalization is not an issue for them when the primary purpose that the vax is being reported for or being promoted as is to prevent hospitalization. So they are asking if they are asymptomatic. Just as though it was believed that the Spanish flu, this was one of the belief that the Spanish flu was caused by some birds who were asymptomatic with that particular type of virus or flu virus. So they are saying, should all those birds be catch or all the animals that have a particular disease should be catch and, and killed because they are asymptomatic? So if a person is asymptomatic and is not being affected by this particular disease in an adverse way why should they take something that is that is supposed to prevent them from something that they have naturally been immune against and protecting them from hospitalization if the unvax they are saying and vax are carriers of the disease, then what difference it makes if the jab doesn't protect one from catching the disease. So if you're jab or if you're on jab, you will still be a host in carrying the disease. So why is it that there's a concern that those who are not jab need to be jab? The other question that they ask, which is important, why there is no liability in case of adverse effects from the vaccine? Why have the government sold their people to the mercy 
of this big pharmaceutical company. Why those who have taken the job, the job seem so worried about the unjob if they are protected by being job? Why are government restricting and taking away the rights of citizens? Will Revelation 11 be fulfilled? That the nations are angry and God's wrath will come of the seven last plague? These are some of the questions that they ask. Do you believe that they have a solid reason not to take the job and a better solution because their natural remedy will not give any adverse or dangerous side effects? Should this be another option? Should their voice be heard? Should they be, should their advice be taken into account? And if they were successful in the past, should we trust them that they will be successful in the present? For those who would like more information, they say, they can check websites such as Prophesy Again, FTB Ministry, True Triumphant Ministry, Amazing Facts Ministry, and Amazing Discoveries Ministry. So, the conversation continues. And let's consider each point and each person's perspective. Do you see light in these present truth believers advice and their prophetic interpretation and understanding? Can you refute such biblical truths? What do you have to say and how do you respond? Please share. This is C. A. Tapper reporting. Goodbye for now. History. What does history teaches us about